New Year greetings to all of you. Um, we're going to continue the study in the Book of Acts. Um, so just wanted to uh, turn your attention to the Book of Acts. Uh, we are up to Chapter 9 now, Chapter 9. And so uh, today we're going to talk about a dramatic conversion. And we already heard a, a great message from Pastor, the four Ds, the decision, the delight, the dependence, and the destiny of our life. And what are we choosing is what we heard from Pastor and uh, this message will dovetail nicely into that as well. Uh, we know about uh, Saul. Saul was uh, someone who was a Hellenistic Jew. He was uh, born as a Jew. He was circumcised uh, at the right time. He was a man that was uh, fervent for the faith. In fact, he was a Pharisee. The uh, the most learned of the Jewish people, and he learned under Gamaliel, as we learned in Acts chapter uh, 5, uh, we hear uh, from Gamaliel, who we're already introduced to, and he's the one that said, if it is of God, it will prosper, otherwise it will die. Um, and so he was not as ardent in hating or op opposing the Christian faith as was uh, Saul. And Saul, because of holding on to his Jewish traditions, hated the Christians. He thought that the Christians was someone uh, that believed in Christ and was making a mockery of the Jewish religion. And so he hard, uh, hard hardly opposed the, the Christians. And we've already studied that in chapter uh, 6, 7, and 8. We see that uh, Saul was the one, a young man, who was giving permission and also guarding the clothes of the soldiers that was stoning Stephen to death. And then again, we read in the last chapter, chapter 8, that, that Saul was uh, part of the people that were persecuting the church in Jerusalem, and all of the people of the church uh, had to be scattered because of it, and they went to Judea and Samaria. And now we see uh, a little bit more detail in chapter 9. So if you have your Bibles with, with you, please turn to Acts chapter 9. And we'll look at uh, the first few scripture portions uh, because it's the phone line and um, we don't have the usual time. I'll, I'll make it short. Um, so chapter 9, Then Saul, till, uh, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus that, it, that he found two uh, who were on the, of the way men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And he journeyed, and he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And I'll come back to that. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a loud voice, but seeing no one. And then Saul rose from the ground, and his eyes were opened, and he saw no one. And they led him by hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, neither ate or drank anything for those three days. And we know the rest of the story. We've learned this from Sunday school onwards, uh, the great and dramatic conversion of Saul, um, and, um, um, you know, we're very familiar with it, but one portion that uh, stood up to me, uh, stood out to me was uh, this question that Jesus asked him, it's hard for you to kick against the goads, and we'll go into that in detail. You know, first, uh, just as a background, there is three times in the book of Acts, and we'll cover it again, in Acts chapter 22, where Paul uh, himself self-describes uh, this conversion experience in front of the Jewish council. And then, then again in Acts chapter 26, uh, where before King Agrippa, uh, Paul is self uh, defending himself and saying this conversion experience. So three times in the book of Acts, just in the matter of one book, three times this conversion experience is mentioned um, in detail. And uh, certain details are added in certain chapters um, so if you have time, please look at chapter 9, chapter 22, and chapter 26 of Acts and study how they fit together. There is no contradiction there, and there is uh, uh, beauty in studying that together. 
So we are very familiar with this conversion. We know that the, through this conversion, this man is uh, converted from a man that is uh, hating on Christians to a man that is the proclaimer of the gospel of Christ, a man that is uh, hating on Christians to a man who is a lover of the Lord Jesus. You know, many times we think that, the, uh, that he was renamed the name Paul, but that's not quite true. He always had this dual name. His uh, uh, name uh, in the Hebrew was Saul, which is Saul, and that meant uh, the one that is asked for. And that was, he was named after this royal king, the first king of Israel. And afterwards, after his conversion, he started using his Hebrew name, Paul. And that means uh, someone of short stature or little or small. And so we see the change in heart that happened he thought he was somebody big. He thought he was someone royal. He thought he was doing something correctly by defending the Jewish faith. He was um, fighting uh, against the Christians and standing uh, against the things of God, standing against the will of God in his life. And we see that after he comes to know the Lord Jesus and after he has this conversion experience, we know that he wrote 13 epistles, uh, maybe even Hebrews that the Bible scholars argue about, and so there is at least 14 books that is uh, possibly written by him, 13 for sure. And so out of all of those books, half of the New Testament is written by him. He is known as the prophet to the Gentiles. And the Lord himself says that you, uh, in, the, in the portion in Acts 26, it says you are going to be my mouthpiece to the Gentiles, to the kings, and also to the Jewish people. And we know that there was such a transformative uh, thing that happened in his life. And he turned from someone who was crazy for the religion of Jewish uh, faith uh, into someone who became the defender of the faith. And he became the one that brought this gospel to the Gentiles. And he is, uh, uh, we've learned over the last many months uh, from Pastor and others about his desire uh, to uh, decrease and for the Lord to increase and for his desire that, that the Lord and his name be glorified. And uh, that became his desire, that he became a man that wanted to be little and not, not be considered royalty. And he was uh, willing to suffer in his missionary journeys. Uh, and then at the very end of his life, we know that as he was under house arrest, he writes the prison episodes and in there, we can see humility. We, want, we can see those words uh, that come to our mind that says, I want to know Christ. I want to, um, I want to be uh, little. And so there was a transformative ex experience that happened in his life. Now, the thing that stood out and uh, that I wanted to focus on in the, in the short time we had, uh, just a few minutes, is this. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. And uh, this goad, this word, is not a very familiar word to us. It's a, a, an agricultural term that is used. In uh, many other versions, um, the non-King James versions, it says uh, maybe that you crick, kick against the pricks. And, uh, and so goads is an instrument that is used. It's a long stick with an iron pointed edge on one side, and it's used to steer the oxen, to steer the donkey, that is doing the work, but if it's going wayward, it is used to uh, stick it to its skin, and then it's able to redirect it uh, to the right direction. So as the person that is guiding the animal, if they're sticking the animal with this uh, goad, if they start to kick or rebel against the master, and you start to kick against it, this pointed edge will go inside their skin, and it will cause damage. It will cause more uh, damage, and that's a question that uh, st stood out to me in the beginning of this year. The Lord is asking, as just like uh, asking Saul, um, and asking um, Saul, who then becomes the greatest apostle in Christendom um, and uh, the one that wrote most of the New Testament. Um, are we? How are we doing these days? Um, are we um, following after the will of the Lord for our life, or are we? Um, educated like Paul, under the, uh, un under the leadership of Gamaliel? Are we putting our, uh, our eggs all in one basket, our education or our status, or, um, and, and not really giving mind to the will of God, the, the power of the Lord in our lives? Um, 
and, and you know, I think culturally, as first generation uh, Americans, first generation um, Americans, uh, and, and uh, I think my parents and, and even uh, me, we put emphasis on certain things, and I started to uh, understand uh, more and saying, you know, yes, it's good to have a good education, but uh, more than that, are we doing the will of God in our life? Um, you know, just because uh, you or your son or your daughter has become a doctor or an engineer or, or, or become a lawyer or whatever it is, you know, is that the emphasis that you're placing or is, is the emphasis more upon uh, doing the will of God in your life? You know, Saul was someone who was well learned, but he was using it all for all the wrong reasons. He was uh, the, the wisest of the Pharisees. He had so much knowledge, book knowledge, in the Jewish law and the tradition, but he was not willing to accept Jesus as the Messiah. But the Lord had to meet him on this road and, and ask him, why are you kicking against the goad? Why are you kicking against the prick? Why are you hurting yourself? Um, and why are you rebelling against me? And that's the question that the Lord has put in my heart to ask us um, this first Sunday. Uh, are we rebelling against the Lord? Are we uh, seeking the will of the Lord in our life? And are we following the will of the Lord in our life? And if we are, if we are spend the time, um, you know, the Lord will tell us what we are to do. And to Apostle uh, Paul, who he, uh, Apostle Paul, he was, he was known as the rest of the uh, New Testament. We see that he became an apostle to the Gentiles. He became all, uh, and he became uh, whatever was needed to win the Jew. He became a Jew. Uh, to win the Gentile, he became a Gentile, and he was willing to do whatever the cause to win uh, many, and became the most prolific apostle in the in the New Testament time. So the question to us, the personal question that is being asked of me, and to, uh, to each one of us, to the parents, to the children, each person here, is there anything that is taking the place of God, and that is uh, taking our time away from deciphering the will of God in our life and doing what is needed for the extension of the kingdom of God. Um, are, why are we kicking against the goad these days? Why are we, um, um, what are we striving for? What is preventing us from fulfilling God's perfect will in our life? And as Pastor was saying, we need to come to a new decision, a decision um, that says that uh, I will live for you. My delight will be upon you, Lord, and my total dependence is upon you, Lord. And then if that is the case, like Saul, uh, who became Paul, the destiny is written by God, and his plan, his will, will be made complete in our life. I'm sure that in the coming weeks we'll go through Chapter 9 and we'll learn more. But uh, my time is up, um, so I will hand it back to uh, Pastor. Thank you. May God bless you all.